Hi, welcome to this video of IBM Spectrum Protect version 8.1.13. We'll be covering how to use the IBM Cloud to copy retention sets out to archive or accelerated archive buckets. Jay is going to walk you through the specifics on the IBM Cloud when you are setting up these buckets and when you're defining them to the Spectrum Protect server and he'll be making special note of the things you need to pay attention to if you are using the IBM Cloud Archive or Accelerated Archive buckets. So with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Jay. This video covers how to set up IBM Spectrum Protect retention sets to use IBM Cloud's Archive and Accelerated Archive Storage classes. With the release of 8.1.13, it's possible to send retention set data to IBM Cloud and take advantage of IBM Cloud's long-term storage. The archive and accelerated archive allow data to be moved to offline storage that is offered at a reduced cost. For the IBM Spectrum Protect point of view, the storage works much the same as Amazon's Glacier storage class. The only difference is that with IBM Cloud, there's unique setup and configuration steps that need to be taken on the IBM Cloud side. This video will cover those steps and discuss the unique details to IBM Cloud. So to begin with, we're on our IBM Cloud console here, looking at the buckets that we have, and we're gonna create a new bucket that can be used by our Attention Cloud Storage Pool. So I'm gonna click the Create Bucket, and then the Customize Bucket. And we'll create a unique name. You can set the settings that you want on your bucket. You can refer to the IBM Cloud documentation for each of these and your location. I'm gonna select US South here just cause that's closer to where I'm at. And then you can select your initial storage class. Any of these should work, but since we're gonna set an archive rule on the bucket, it probably doesn't matter that much what you're going to set here, but I'm gonna leave it as smart tier. Now here is the key piece of the setup is this archive rule on the bucket needs to be set correctly. So you click add rule here and then select which kind of archive you want to use. The accelerated archive offers you long-term storage that you're able to access within two hours to get restored time. If you select archive, it can take up to 12 hours to restore those volumes that have been archived. So for this demo, I'm just gonna select accelerated archive we want to just send it out to the archive as soon as we've written it to the bucket. So we're going to select zero days. I'd recommend setting it to zero days because that's kind of what the point here of the retention pool is, is to save stuff out into archival storage. You can set it to longer. So if you set it to say 30 days, that means those volumes that are written out to this bucket will be around in standard storage or whatever storage class you set above here for that many days before it gets archived. And that means you won't need to do a staged volume command later on if these volumes haven't been archived. So we'll go ahead and we'll set that and we'll save it. Now, a couple notes here is that first, by setting that archive type either to accelerated or to archive, you are determining how fast your data can come back. So unlike in the Google case where we offer different restore types on the stage volume command, you can't do that here with the IBM Cloud. You have to set it when you set the archive setup. And the other thing is, is that this archive rule applies to everything that gets written to the bucket. So that means that you shouldn't share this bucket with other types of data that are coming from Spectrum Protect. For example, do not write into this bucket cloud container pool data. Um, those containers would get archived and we wouldn't be able to read them or recall them. And same thing with DB backup data is in the DB backup to cloud path. We don't want those backups to be um, sent to the archival storage because the restore process will not be able to read those database volumes. It's important in the IBM cloud case, if you're gonna do these archives, this archive setup to not share the bucket with other data types. That's the setup on the IBM cloud side. Once we have that set up on the IBM cloud side, we can move to Spectrum Protect and we can continue the setup there. So this is my Spectrum Protect server. I already have a connection set up here that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use this one right here. It's tied to a bucket that I've created before that has the archival class set up. I'm just gonna reuse that connection. So I'll create a device class and I'm gonna call it IBM Cloud Dev 
I'm gonna say dev type cloud. We're gonna use the that connection there. And then I'm gonna set the cloud storage class to accelerated archive. I'm gonna create that. And so now I have that device class that is set up to do the accelerated archive that we've tied the bucket to on the IBM cloud side. And then I go ahead and define my archival storage pool. I'm gonna name it IBM cloud rep pool. I'm gonna tie it to that dev class that I just created on the line above. And I'm gonna give it pool type retention. That now created the pool and we can look at it here in a second. It also created the storage rule that we'll need to send retention sets to this pool. So now that we've set this up on the IBM cloud side and in Spectre Protect, we can go ahead and use this pool to send retention sets to just like any of the other normal retention pools that we've covered in previous videos. And once the data is written to IBM cloud and sent off to archive, we can use the stage volume command to retrieve these volumes from the archival storage and put it back so that we can read it when we need to do the restores. Once retention sets or volumes have been sent to the archival storage classes in IBM cloud, in order to get that data back and be readable by Spectrum Protect, you'll need to do a stage volume command where you can restore either an individual volume or you can do it by ret set ID. And if you issue these commands, the stage volume command, which we've documented in other videos and documentation, you'll be able to recall that data from the archival area in IBM Cloud and make it readable to Spectrum Protect. One difference between IBM Cloud and the AWS Glacier stuff that we've mentioned before is that when you do the stage volume command, you don't have a retrieval type parameter um, because the retrieval type was decided when you set either archive or accelerated archive on the bucket in IBM Cloud. Um, a couple other notes that if the bucket on the IBM Cloud does not match what you specified here on the device class, then what will happen is we will surface a warning message indicating that there's a mismatch between what is defined in the device class and what is set on the IBM Cloud. We will still write the data out to IBM Cloud, but what will happen is data that's sent out without the retention rule set correctly on the IBM Cloud side, data that's written out there may not get archived the way you expected based on what is defined in the device class. So be aware of that if it's mismatched or if you set on the rule, basically you can disable the archival rule as well. If that's disabled, you'll see the message as well so that we can be in sync. We try to detect if we're out of sync with what's set on the IBM Cloud. The connection, it, it depends on what you update in the connection. You can change the URL. There's reasons to allow that URL to change. You can change your identity and as long as the identity or the password, you can update those. As long as the identity and the password are accessible to the cloud, then those should be fine to change. What you can't change is once you have data in a bucket, we don't allow you to change the bucket name. You can, you can update those, just not the bucket name. We should prevent the bucket name change if there's data already sent in there. If you haven't written anything to the bucket, you can change it. Um, generally, there's no reason to change the bucket name. So that's why we prevent that and you'd end up in trouble. And the, the bucket name, like if it's a cloud container pool, we save the bucket name as part of the path for the containers as well as the volume. So um, that's why we don't allow it to change once stuff's written there. You can change stuff in the device class. For example, you can change the cloud storage class. The thing is, is if you're going to change this like from accelerated archive to normal archive, you'd want to make the update in the IBM cloud bucket as well so that they match um, and are consistent. They don't match whether because you did an update here, an update device class, or if you changed it on the, the bucket side, we would surface that warning message saying that there's a mismatch there and you're not getting what you expected. Great. Thanks, Jay. So as Jay mentioned, be sure to check out the other videos I have on copying the retention sets out to cloud storage pools and cloud archive, and also retrieving those using the staging process. Thank you very much.